Do you know what's the biggest difference between businesses that fail and businesses that thrive today? It's actually pretty simple. Successful businesses solve a real problem. Meet someone who actually nailed it and it really paid off. The problem? Creating high quality product shots is expensive and very time consuming. The solution? AI. It has been proven that good quality pictures can increase sales by even up to 33% and 56% of consumers are way more likely to purchase from an online store if the pictures look good. So that's why when Photo Room introduced AI backgrounds, one of the most revolutionary tools in e-commerce photography, it simply blew up. But there is a plot twist. Before it became a global success, it totally flopped. We're really excited and we release it and it's a huge failure. Which only makes the story more interesting. Photoroom's journey isn't just about building one of the most powerful AI tools out there. It's a story about staying resilient, listening to users and turning failure into innovation. And also about using bricks to put out fires. If your hair is on fire and I hand you a brick, you're happy to use the brick. So I sat down with Elliot, CTO and co-founder of Photoroom, someone who doesn't just use AI, he actually builds the AI, to talk about Studio HD, the newest upgrade to AI backgrounds born from a real urgent need to create AI backgrounds so realistic that even people who trained the model cannot tell them apart from real photos. Elliot, why is Studio HD a game changer that every business out there should know about? Well, we're really excited about Studio HD because you can generate images that are indistinguishable from reality. So think of it as if you were using a super extensive, expensive studio setup or if you were paying for a whole um, shooting in the street uh, if your products are outside. Well, now you can do it just right from your phone. And if okay. you show it to someone, no one can tell. It's been generated with AI. Studio HD is an upgrade to our product, AI Backgrounds. What is the difference between AI Backgrounds and Studio HD? Well, you can see it in the results uh, for our previous version that is called V3. When you were generating an image, it struggled a little bit to generate props, for instance. So if you want to put a fork next to your meal, uh, if you want to put uh, people behind a car, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to show streets, for instance, or even the Eiffel Tower, uh, this is something where V3 would be struggling. So it was great at minimalistic backgrounds, you know, marble table um, in the grass, but it was not really good at generating, you know, the real world. Mm -hmm. And Studio HD really crosses this line where now we can generate pretty much anything that comes through your mind and it will look like as if it was shot in the real world. If we go back in time, where did the idea to even create AI backgrounds in the first place come from? Like, what was the problem that you were trying to solve? We, we always talked to our users and they were telling us that, well, their dream setup is to be able to showcase their products or showcase their work just like Nike is doing, just like um, Dior is doing, having the most beautiful images to showcase what their, their, their product is. And so initially with Photoroom, you could remove the background, put a white background, and that was a good first step. But what people were telling us is, what if I could get the same results as this very, very expensive shooting? Um, uh, so expensive camera, expensive environment, uh, the beautiful lights. And so that's, that's where the idea came from. The, the very first version that we created was based off this technology called Stable Diffusion. When it came out, we thought, oh, this is game changing. We really, like, we're going to finally be able to generate um, images uh, from scratch just using text. So we work hard, the technology comes out. Um, we, we, we spend two, three months working on it on this first version. We're really excited. I remember it was like towards November and we release it and it's a huge failure. <laughs> like no one uses it, it's slow. Uh, it changes your product as well. That's something we learned, but like you would put, you know, um, a cup or you would put uh, any product and it would alter it a little bit. It might change the texture, it might change the shape. And so people were telling us, you know, I cannot sell that because it's going to look different when the person receives it than from the picture. So we, we, we go back to the drawing board and we say, okay, there's a few things we need to do. First of all, we must not touch the product. We might improve the lighting and that's what we do, but we will not alter the texture of the product, the shape of the product. And then it needs to be really fast. 
just read it was taking one minute, one minute on the phone. You have other stuff to do. You have to and run your business. Like, what, two seconds, not even? And now it takes, yeah, a few seconds and you get beautiful results in just a few seconds. Uh, we can talk about it later, but that's something we're quite proud about on Studio HD is that it still maintains this very, very um, fast generation time. And so, yeah, we, 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 we go back to the drawing board and we ship this, this first version. And in just a few seconds, it was changing the background. So it's not touching your product, just changing the background. And it solves the issue of, I worked hard to create this product. I want it to be showcased in a beautiful environment. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what uh, AI background was about. The initial failure didn't really stop you. It sounds like it motivated the team to just push harder, right? Well, pretty much. Well, obviously we were disappointed. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked hard on this feature and you know, not many people used it and liked it. So again, we, we went to talk to people and said, hey, uh, what's, what's the issue? And so they were, they surfaced a bunch of issues. And so that's what allowed us to, to create this new, this new version that doesn't alter the product and that is really fast. We were motivated to solve the initial problem, which was showcasing your product in a beautiful environment. I'm curious to know, how does it work in terms of like keeping that motivation and that spirit alive? Like, how did you know that there is potential and it's worth because initially you got negative feedback, right? So like, how did you know that there is potential and you should keep working on this? Yes, one good way to, to think about it is, is if, you, if you remove AI from, from just the idea, you, you go back to the initial problem like, okay, wh what if we could in, one, in a few seconds uh, do like a photo shooting? Mm -hmm. and, and so that was the initial problem that we knew people had. And so what didn't work in the first version is that we were not close enough from solving that problem, but that we knew that people had that issue. You know, some people call it a hair on fire problem. If your hair is on fire and I hand you a brick, you're happy to use the brick. Like it's, it's this kind of problem where it's like, it's, it's, it's so important it's to solve. French saying? No, no, it's a like startup domain saying like, you, okay, you, you should focus on hair on fire problem, problems. Um, okay, because, because if you focus on problems that I, hey, okay, if you solve it, yeah, I, I'm not sure I would use it, but th this is the kind of problem that we like to focus on, like this kind of, uh, of, of problems that a lot of people have and so burning that if you hand them even the first version of a solution, they would happily take it because it's much better than already everything that's out there. That's super interesting because, you know, I actually didn't know that, that the first version of AI backgrounds would change the product because that kind of like makes me think about all our new tools like virtual model, product staging, you know, there's still things that we need to improve in terms of product, etc. But it's kind of inspiring to hear that something that works so well right now also wasn't great from the start, like it took work to make it as good as it is today. Definitely, yeah. That's what we love to do. We iterate and gathering feedback. So if people have feedback on this new Studio HD version, uh, we'd be glad to, you know, hear the, hear what they think. Mm -hmm. uh, we already got good feedback. You know, some people they still want the minimalistic version, so they can still switch to the previous version. But other people, when when they see the results that they get, so generating a street, uh, generating people, generating faces, they're just blown away and they immediately switch to Studio HD. What you're saying is that basically Studio HD is really good at generating those small details that would be normally difficult for AI, like humans, animals, shadows. But how does it work? How does it do it? Like, how, what do you? Where do you even start? Yeah. So we, in the end, there's no magical recipe. What we did is that we worked really, really hard to make the model think more. How do you make the model think? <laughs> it's just you give it more time to you give it more time to to think. So we, the 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 previous version was using five times less power to to generate those results. And so what we worked out on is, is giving the, the ability of the model to spend more time to think about those details. So it generates the first version of the image and then it, it thinks more, uh, okay, here there's a human, but maybe it doesn't look uh, good enough, so I'm going to improve it. And then this street, maybe the windows, they don't look straight, so I'm going to fix it. And so it, it, it really spends more time refining the image and the result. The challenge, if you do that, is that people, they don't want to wait. So that's where we work really, really hard to make sure that the model can do its thinking, but do its thinking um, from a user point of view really fast. So that we, that's, that, that was one of the challenges. Like how do you give the model to think really hard, so put more effort into thinking while still not being too slow for the user. So who is Studio HD really for? Like who can really benefit from this new model? If you think of people that were using uh, the previous version, that was lacking uh, the, the details, some of them were telling us that we're not there yet in terms of quality. So if you think, for instance, if you're selling cars, the environment that is around the car is not necessarily minimalistic. If you want to put the car in the street, 
the buildings they need to look right, the floor needs to look right, there might be people in the back. And so if all of those elements they don't look right, the person buying or renting the car will probably be not really trusting your product or your website. Another example is for instance for uh, food, if you're showcasing food, you might want to have other things around the food and so having a fork, a knife, um, a fork has a surprisingly uncommon shape in terms of if you think of the, the real world, it's a human invention. And so V3 would struggle to generate it, you know, having the, the, the four spikes and, and having them all look the same. And so Studio is really good at this, having all the props around your object. Might it be uh, more food that you want to put around, might it be curry, uh, plates, and generating all of those is something Studio is really great at. And the last one is something that we're quite excited about, is the ability to generate humans. You know, we know that the, the conversion rate of products online, they, they go through the roof if you add humans to the image. So uh, it's true for furniture, it's true for uh, any cosmetics, uh, it's true for jewelry as well. And so we're finally able to generate realistic humans. So think about hands, faces, uh, or just in general um, people if you want them to put them behind your product or next to your product. So we're, yeah, we're, we're really getting to a level where you can generate images that are indistinguishable from reality because there's nothing that the model cannot generate. Yeah, I mean, the quality is truly crazy. I mean, sometimes even us, like we work with AI, we see these Im images every single day. And I think majority of people in here wouldn't be able to tell AI from reality apart because it's getting so good, right? Yes, and we, we were doing a test uh, on the previous models and we would go in the street and show people, okay, two images, do you, but which one do you think is real, which mm -hmm. one is not? And we had to use minimalistic scenes, you know, because uh, the model couldn't generate those. And now as we're training those models, we're evaluating um, so the, the original image, so the product with its real world background and then the generated one. And most of the time it's hard to tell the difference. It's like, okay, which one is real? Like, is there a bug or actually, sometimes I, I look at the real world and I'm like, this this something wrong here. And sometimes it's a real image and the, the, the generated one uh, is, is too perfect and I cannot tell which one is which. So it's true that even having trained the model, I, I cannot ten, tell the difference uh, between the two. That's crazy. When you're working on a project like this, is there like a specific moment when you realize that you're really onto something good, that this is really going to work out? I think those moments where you cannot tell the difference between a generated image and a real one are, are definitely one of them. But on our side, it's really when we confront it to the users. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of user testing with that model and you should see the faces of the users when they try it out, uh, when they play with the model and they see that anything they can think about they can create it. So there's no more limit of you have to work around the, what the model can generate or cannot generate. No, here it's really, I have an idea and my product will appear in that environment. It's true for both people who have tried previous versions, when I see that the limitations have been lifted and people who are just trying the model for the first time. For those people, it's also being blown away by the fact that it's so fast. You know, you don't have to wait 30 seconds. You don't have to wait one minute. Uh, you can just get your result instantly and quickly iterate on uh, getting the best AI background. So obviously there are so many great AI tools out there and there's a lot of tools that can generate great visuals. But what do you think makes Studio HD actually really usable for businesses? I think one of the main reasons is uh, the speed and how efficient it is at getting the result that you want. So you might see um, an ad in a magazine you might see something in the street or you might see something online and instantly, whatever your product is, you can just drop it in Photoroom and get a similar result. And so this efficiency, we believe is really key because as a business owner, you have other things to do than spending time creating images. Uh, you have, if you're a chef, uh, cooking is more important. If you're making jewelry, uh, thinking of your next product line for the next season is more important. And that's what's really important is that in just a few seconds, you get the result that you want and the model listens to whatever input uh, you give it. It's super easy to use, like literally anyone can use it. Probably the, one of the easiest AI tools to generate images, right? Definitely. You, you don't have to go in, into installing Discord and, and, and typing text even. You just drop your image, select the AI background, and we'll have beautiful templates for you. And if you want to go into details or if you want to start from a template and go inside, you know, fine tuning it to add uh, a few ideas that you have. So for instance, I don't know, if we generate something um, we put your product on a beach and you want to add flowers around it, uh, that's something you can do in just a few seconds. And so yes, uh, it's a very good mix between ease of use and also control of the output.
What were the biggest technical or creative challenges behind working on a product like this? Definitely the, the biggest challenge was how do we keep it fast for the user? So we know, you know, we have a, a machine learning team, an AI team, uh, which is a bunch of uh, uh, engineers that are really, really smart and great at what they do. And the initial version of uh, Studio and Studio HD, if you don't optimize it at all, I think it takes 30 seconds to generate an image. Mm -hmm. And so they took this and they got it done to just a few seconds. So 30 seconds was too much for people? Definitely, because you, ju you just start generating an image and I don't know, you get this notification and you, you think, okay, what else do I have to do on my phone? Mm -hmm. And you know, if you want to try um, five things, well, you know, with 30 seconds and, uh, and, and the typing is like, you know, three minutes, sometimes five minutes. And so with, with just generate, being able to um, generate in just a few seconds, you can iterate much more until you get the result that you want. Because every time you try something, well, you get the result almost instantly. And so that's, that's something that's really, really important. So optimizing the algorithm to be really fast is something that we work really, really hard on uh, in order to get the best, the best results for our users. And then just making sure that the presets and the scenes, they were also working well for uh, this new uh, HD model. Because the previous presets, we optimized them mostly for minimalist backgrounds. And here we, we really worked on, on getting them to be more suited for this new model. So what part of Studio HD are you most proud of, besides the speed? Ah, that's a tough one besides the speed. So no, really the thing I'm the most proud of is it's indistinguishable from reality. Mm. Like you cannot look at an image and say, oh, like I can see here, this doesn't look right. Everything looks great. So both beautiful as if it was uh, shot by a professional photographer, but also realistic. You can no longer tell it's AI. And so that's why we're really excited about this Studio HD release. So where do you see the future of AI backgrounds? Well, we reached this new level of quality where you know it's a bit hard to get much uh, beyond that. I think the next step for us is really about learning your taste and your brand aesthetics. So it's really about saying, hey, we know that uh, I don't know you're selling cosmetics and you want maybe a sort of brutalist environment uh, with a bit of uh, concrete. And that's really the style that your brand is going for. Well, this is where what we're exploring right now at the moment. And that's what we're doing already with the brand kit. So if you look in photo room, you can say, okay, here's uh, what my brand is about. Here are my brand guidelines. So we're starting to use this information to feed the AI background model so that uh, if you have a brand for this, those cosmetics, and I have a brand because I'm selling vintage cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, the images that uh, your AI backgrounds will generate will be really different from mine because they will follow your mm -hmm. brand and they will follow mine. Okay, and Photoroom basically does that based on analyzing the brand kit. Analyzing the brand kit and also analyzing your past uh, work and your past uh, past export. So the more I use Photoroom, the more it adapts to my taste. Exa exactly, yes. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Elliot. I'm really excited to hear what people are going to think about Studio HD. Yeah, me too. Really excited. Thank you very much. If you want to test out Studio HD and see how AI backgrounds can elevate your business, here is a QR code. Scan it, download Photoroom and give it a try. And please let me know what you think. Keep in mind that you can use Photoroom on your phone as an app and on your computer, the choice is yours. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions or any feedback. We would love to hear what you think about Studio HD. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.